it's November. Hello my lovely friends, it's Margaret. Welcome or welcome back to my channel. Today we are going to be talking about all of the books that I read in the month of November. As you'll remember in November I had a few things going on. I was doing a digithon, I was doing the NetGalley November readathon, and I'm also doing, as always, the Avengers thing that I do. Have I put any of these on anybody's mission log? No. We lost half of our people last month, so it doesn't matter anyways. So all in all, I read five books last month. Not what I was hoping for with everything that I was doing, but um, I did get distracted by something that I can't tell you about, but I will be telling you about soon. You, There will be a video. I think y'all will like it. The first book I read for the month of November was Apple in the Middle by Dawn Quigley. This is very, hold on, can we get it? Okay, there we go, you can see it now. So this was the group book for Indigathon this year. It is about Apple. Apple is a 15 year old, I think, and she has been living in the big city. She is very much about like fashion and all of this stuff, trying to fit in at her school, but she doesn't really fit in. And then Summer comes along and so instead of her family doing this big family trip her dad decides it's time for her to get to know her mother's family her mom died when she was very young so apple has had very little contact with her mom's side of the family very little contact with her native heritage and so he sends her over there to get to know them and to you know be able to be more connected to that part of her. I ended up giving this four stars. I liked the narrative style. It's very stream of consciousness and very much felt like like how you would think through things as a teenager like very much like there and right in the moment and and there wasn't like there wasn't any retrospect or all that much retrospect it definitely felt like you were in fact in apple's head you were going through the day feeling the things that apple was feeling i think apple and her family were really well fleshed out characters even the ones that were side characters that were small they all had the little the quirks and the things that you you put into a character that makes you go okay i know what they're doing when they're not in the scene. Her family did drive me a little nutty at the beginning because I was just like y'all can we can we can we maybe give her a little more guidance instead of like throwing her into the deep end of the pool. But all in all they were great characters and I really liked watching Apple interact with them and kind of like having to learn certain lessons that she maybe hadn't learned with her dad and in the city. I think we definitely get to see Apple grow co more comfortable in her own skin because certain pressures have been removed from her. I will say that there are a couple of trigger warnings. They're spoilery though, so they will be in the description box all the way at the bottom if you are interested in those. The next book I finished, I had to return to the library, but it was so good that I went out and bought the second volume, so I'm just gonna hold that up and that was Not Your Idol, volume one. So this was one of my picks for my NetGalley November TBR because it is the oldest book that I have had on my NetGalley. Like my old NetGalley account. So this is about Nina Kamiya. She was an idol and then she ended up getting attacked by a fan at an event and so she has completely left kind of that idol life. She is not comfortable working with fans anymore or being in, in, interacting with fans anymore. Um, especially men make her very uncomfortable because she is continually reliving this assault because it, it came out of nowhere. There is a lot in this particular thing that talks about girls and women and the things they have to deal with when they are out and about in a society and the dangers that face them just from existing. There's this very slow build throughout volume one where we're getting to know Nina more and we're getting to understand what happened. There is a boy at her school that does recognize her because her sister is a huge fan um, and there is a really nice build between them because she's been going like it really gets into the different reactions that people can have to trauma because Nina's way of dealing with what happened to her is to completely take away everything about her that was feminine, everything that she blames for the fact that she was assaulted. We also have characters in here that really lean into being the girly girl because that's how they deal with the continual just misogyny that they deal with. Definitely warnings for sexual assault and just violence against women in general because that is a theme that really is tackled and explored heavily in this novel. I really like how it was done though, or at least in the volume one, I really liked how it was done. There are some like cheesy kind of shoujo manga things that happen that maybe not the best choices, like not really how you want to behave around someone who is dealing with an assault, but it, it, yeah. I ended up giving this four stars. The next one that we finished was not nearly as um, 
good. And that is The Lashed She by H.J. Nelson. This is another arc that I read for Night Galley November. It comes out sometime in March. I'll put it across the screen. But it was very interesting to me because it says it's like the Hunger Games meets the Hundred. And the basic premise is that there is a virus that has wiped out all the women. And our main character is the last woman alive because her father kept her ice. Like, when stuff started going down, they literally just, like, packed it up and went to live in the woods where they would be around no other people. This was, like, there are ways I think you could have tackled this storyline really, really interestingly. But you can really tell that this book was written in 2016 before certain things were conversations that were be ha being had on a, like, national scale and it really like was not updated it was originally a wattpad book they are now publishing it as a novel <sighs> the first half was really just needed some help the last half once you get into the action and you get past some of the world building that's a little bit better based on how much things improved at the end of the book i would definitely be interested in reading book two although a lot of my issues with it i don't think are going to be fixed in book two because it's still being written by the same author and i don't think that she is updating it at all. I think she's just publishing it as is. <laughs> like I said, the beginning was very slow. Also, it was very much based on the gender binary and very much still rooted in a lot of like gender, gendered things. Things being gendered that don't need to be gendered and like this is what women do and this is what men do. The word female was thrown around so many times in the first half of this novel and like it wasn't thrown around as just like an adjective, a descriptor. It, it was thrown around like some incel reply guy throws it around on the internet. Like I literally had to go check to see if it was not <laughs> a man writing this book because of how certain things were worded and where that was used. I'm just like, what? Just, just call her a woman. It also really does not take into account the like massive spectrum that gender is. There were also like several just overdone tropes that happen in this book and I don't want to get into them because they're spoilery but like just <sighs> like specifically between the villain and the main character who is not at all happy like like does not like the villain at all just mainly between like things that happen with the main character and the villain and the things he does to her and just like i'm like do we do we have to see this again do we have to go through this do we hmm. but it wasn't any all that much better with the love interest i mean like the love interest was a better person and better interactions but it was so rushed like clearly they were attracted to each other at the beginning and like okay i'll buy that like from the time they first meet um he has not seen another woman for who knows how long obviously he's gonna fall head over heels her like basically we go from their antagonistic to he's helping her out and then some stuff happens and all of a sudden they're in love with each other and I'm like where was the build how did we get why are they kissing I don't ask that very often in books but there are times that I'll just be like this is either inappropriate to be doing where we are right now or you didn't sell me on it like sell me on what's going on definitely was written by someone who was into Bellart based on the number of times he called her princess and like we really could have built something on there and that was probably the only reason I was mildly okay with them as a couple but I just there was so much that like we <laughs> We could have had so many character moments and things to flesh out that first half of the book before we got into the action and all of a sudden they're like in love with each other um, and we didn't get it and I, we needed it. We needed more interactions with them like and having them kind of like like each other instead of just being like uh, he's a boy and he's hot but I can't. The record kept skipping as we were going basically like we'd skip to the next thing. And I ended up giving that two stars. Uh, I'll say two and a half even though Goodreads doesn't do have stars but like it got two stars. I would read the next book though if I could get my hands on it at like the library or something. This is not something that I'm going to keep on my shelves but I do kind of want to know how things wrap up. The next thing that we read was a Full Metal Alchemist volume eight. This is 
things are happening so much more quickly in this series than I remember them happening when I read it the first time. Now part of that is because when I read the series I think I'm thinking I might have got into it pretty early on because I remember like these issues that are in volume 8 which are issues does it tell you? FMA was a monthly manga so you only got one a month <laughs> and I remember waiting for every every installment it was just they were a little longer but I remember waiting painstakingly for every installment I remember this arc starting and this 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 mm, I love this it is an emotion packed volume there are so many things going on there are so many like character arcs that are starting in this particular in like just just in one moment in this particular novel granted some of them are a little gender normy and i'm just like why, why we gotta put that on the girl why can't the girl be the badass as well like she is badass but like why are we gonna do like your hands are not for fighting please edward she fights with you all the time i just the way arakawa fleshes out these characters the space she gives them to learn and grow and be better i i just absolutely adore and i i love i I love these characters. I love the way that they're going about going getting answers. I love the fact that they're always getting themselves in trouble and nothing is ever like they come up with plans and the plans are always they're never executed the way they are planned out. They always go awry and they always go awry in like the worst possible way. It's fantastic. Like you want to see upping the stakes. The stakes are up well technically they were upped at the end of the last volume, but like just the amount of stuff it happens in this. Well, no, wait, no, I'm on the next volume. Yeah, it happens at the end of this. Okay, I know what I'm talking about. Please, if you have not listened to me yet, here I am, once again, begging you to read this series. I just, if you are interested in manga and you haven't read Full Metal Alchemist yet, or if you like comics and you haven't read Full Metal Alchemist, please give it a try. It's not as serious as DC Marvel comics tend to be like art style wise it's a little goofy at times but oh my god I love it so much and Ed is like he is a cinnamon roll who looks like he'd kill you but also would kill you just depending on whether or not you've called him short if I was Catholic uh, Edward Elric would be my patron saint also please note if you are into the friends to lovers trope this is one of the best friends to lovers arcs there is in existence because you get you get the whole part of it i mean the boys have always been obsessed with winry because she's the only girl they know but like you get to see the whole like arc as they kind of slowly realize that like wait this person has grown up and i am attracted to them now what is happening please 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 read it. The final book that we need to talk about is Firekeeper's Daughter by Angeline Boulay. This got five stars. This is one of the best written debuts I've ever read. This is what you get when you have a system that continually rejects authors of color's work and makes them go back to the drawing board and continually like craft and polish their story because you see books like this you see books like Legendborn you see when you see books that are such a strong debut that make you go wow this is like so much stronger than say Shadow and Bone there is a reason for that and that reason is the fact that it is very hard for authors of color to get published especially if they want to tell books about their own their own experience because publishing houses will turn them away and say oh no we already have the black book for this month we already have the indigenous book for this month or this year not this month so just just know that when you sit down with books like that and you go wow why are they so much better than so many of the other debuts out there that goes into it now definitely um Angeline mentions that she has been working on this since she was I think 16 so since she was a teenager I do not know if that is the reason that she's been working on this for so long and why she didn't get published earlier. My God, this is a heavy book. But I know that in many, many cases it is. Rant aside, let's talk about the book. This is such a beautifully unapologetic and honest book. I mean, character Donna Fontaine, her mom is white, her dad was Anishinaabe. She's been very connected to her father's family because her mother is wonderful. Um, but her mother is also a very much She's very much a, a fragile flower. Let's rephrase that. She's very emotional and sensitive, and I think Donis reads that as 
weakness and as fragility. Donis has determined at the beginning of this book that she is going to stay home and go to a local college rather than go off to a big university, which was her original plan. She ends up getting involved with some stuff that's going on in the hockey team and through getting involved with the stuff that's going on in the hockey team, she also ends up kind of running into a drug problem that has cropped up. Meth has definitely always been a problem in her community, but she ends up running into an investigation and becoming a part of this investigation that is looking for a, like, a Newberry very, um, like, potent, that's the word, a potent strain of meth that is doing things that people, like, people haven't seen meth do before, or at least very, very rarely happens. Throughout the entirety of this book, Donis is centering her community. You can really tell the connection that she has to her people's traditions. Um, one of the things that I really liked this is that the the explanations that we do get for certain things, not everything is explained, but there are explanations that are given, and that is because, whoops, okay, I have a hand cramp. I am putting this down because it is heavy, okay, okay. All right, so it's there. The explanations that we do get are very much centered around another character who is also indigenous, but didn't have the privilege that Donis had in growing up near their family and knowing all of the traditions that Donis was taught. Like I said, it is very unapologetic. It is very honest. It does not paint a rosy color over the things that Donis has experienced and the things she knows other indigenous women have experienced. It doesn't pay, put rose-colored glasses over the issues in her community, but it also is able to focus, like most of the focus is definitely on the strength that she draws from that community. I will say there are trigger warnings for a few things, for sexual assault, just violence against women in general. There is anti-indigenous language in here because Donis experiences that. Um, and also we see a lot of grief just because Donis has lost people recently in her family. So, But one of the things that I really liked about this book, and I have seen other books where we really just layer on the trauma and you sit there and you go, why? This was already sad. Why did we make it sadder? But in this book, every single bad or negative thing that happened had a purpose, had a tie. It was something that was already affecting her community. So like it wasn't done in like a trauma porn way. It was done in an honest and just this is what we deal with kind of way. So there are no easy answers in a lot of those cases. Even though it's not necessarily fair, you really have to sit with how the system has played into the end of this book. I just ended it so frustrated and mad and wanting certain things to have happened and knowing in my heart that it could not have been a truthful book if things had gone as nice and neat and wrapped up as I would have liked. Please just like if, if you haven't, if you have not read this book yet, you definitely should check it out. It is wonderful. It is fantastic. I loved every minute. I don't know if I would say I love because there were some moments of rage. There were some moments of sadness. There were some times that I wanted to throw the book across the room. Um, there were some times that I just like it makes your heart hurt because of things that happened, but it was also just really really good. Um, I will say there are a lot of Anishinaabe words in here so I will link the dictionary that I used. I looked up a couple of things like most of the stuff I was able to get through context. I didn't really feel the need to look it up but uh, there were a couple of things I'm like I want to make sure that I'm getting the right the right thing here so I will have that if I can find it again I will have that linked in the description box so check it out. Don't sit there and like message some random indigenous person asking them what the word is. Don't do that. Use Google. Use Google. Uh, all right, as I already said, this guy definitely takes the cake as my favorite book of the month. Least favorite book of the month is obviously going to be The Last She by H.J. Nelson. Like, I didn't have high expectations, truly, and yet it still let me down. If you are feeling chatty, please let me know in the comments what was your favorite and or least favorite book in the month of November. If you only read one, just let me know whether you liked it or you didn't like it. If you are not feeling chatty, but you want to let me know that you watched to the end, just leave me a butterfly emoji in the comments so that I know. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. Also, if you enjoyed this video, go ahead and check out some of the videos over here. Help me helps me get my watch time up. And if you like these videos and you like this video and you're not subscribed, hit that subscribe button. It's right over here. And if you are subscribed and you haven't hit the bell icon, I would appreciate it if you did. That is it for now, my friends. Happy reading and I will see you later when we will talk about more wordy, nerdy things. Bye!